The opportunity for Ireland is absolutely immense in this particular space. We have one of the best wind regimes in, in Northern Europe. Our land mass is massively unexploited in respect of renewable energy. And we, we have the potential, in particularly in a context where Ireland is suffering uh, in a recessionary environment, to use the renewable energy opportunity to really drive economic growth in Ireland. The European Directive requires that Ireland achieve a 40% target. Today we're achieving approximately somewhere between 15 and 18%, depending on how well the wind is blowing. Um, and in order to achieve our, our target of 2020, we have to build somewhere of the order of 200 to 250 megawatts of projects per annum. The current run rate is less than 100 megawatts. Why is that? Why, why are we not delivering and achieving the type of traction that we need to? number of reasons. The planning environment continues to be very, very challenging. While there seems to be increasingly improved or broader, broader acceptance by the community of renewable energy, there still remains very, very significant opposition and it tends to be localised in different parts of the country. So projects, good projects on, in, in, in very windy areas and, and high upland areas, some of which can take many, many years to get through the planning process, some of which fail. Other problems in planning are the, the whole designation of areas as being protected areas from, and while this is good and while this is important, what I think hasn't been dealt with is the conflict between policies coming from the Department of Environment around environmental protection and the, the, the imperatives around the policies coming from the Department of Communications, Energy and Natural Resources to drive the Renewable Energy Programme and reduce our dependence of the order of six billion on fossil fuels every year. The second major issue I think facing, facing the whole programme is the, is the national grid itself. Most of the early projects that have taken us to 15 to 18 per cent today have benefited from leveraging the existing capacity in the, nat the national grid. But of course the, the grid is now pretty well maxed out and AirGrid have a very, very um, important national project called Great Grid 25 which is to strengthen the grid and allow it to be able to take very significant increases in generation capacity, both renewable and conventional. And AirGrid themselves have their own challenges and we've seen the issues with the North-South interconnector and we've seen the very significant opposition which seems to manifest in local regions in relation to the overhead transmission lines. Many, many of the projects that developers like Quilta and others have are contingent for their success on the national grid happening. So we're very supportive of the work Air Grid are doing, the approach they are taking, and, and we need them, the country needs them, to be successful in getting the, the highways for electricity built so that the projects can come on the back of them. Of course, the financial crisis is a huge impediment also. I mean, banks, it's a fact that banks lent money um, rather more easily years back than they, they do today. The due diligence requirements on projects is absolutely forensic in the extreme. And there's a question mark as to whether banks, even after that whole process, have adequate finance. So I think the government certainly need to maintain an emphasis on encouraging the banks to lend to quality projects. I think we need to face a reality that I believe it's unlikely we'll achieve our targets under the current regime. The Gate 3 process uh, granted grid connection offers very much on a first come, first serve basis without any reference to whether the projects were genuinely viable or doable. And I think it's time to seriously look at a new gate process and that we reward projects that can get planning, that can get finance, that are robust from a financial and a technical perspective and allow a new wave of projects in that can genuinely drive Ireland to meet its targets. So the challenges are there um, and I think it's incumbent on everybody to work together in order to overcome those pro projects, th those problems. The prize is not only reaching our targets, but we really need to be grabbing the opportunity and setting a higher ambition. I say that for two reasons. One is it saves this country an awful lot of money the more renewable energy we have on the system. That's a fact that's been reported on. But secondly, in respect of our, our renewable energy targets for heat, we have no prospect of achieving that target. That target is 12% and there is no way we are going to achieve that. 
um, and I think there's a great opportunity for the electricity target to actually compensate for failures to achieve in the heat, in the heat target sector. So I think if you look at the indigenous economy, there are very, very few sectors, if any, with this type of growth potential. And it's incumbent on all of the stakeholders to work collaboratively together and to really, let's get to the position where we are building 200, 250 megawatts of projects year on year from now to 2020. Our nearest neighbour, our biggest trading partner, the UK, is facing a crisis in respect to generation capacity in the next decade. The coal fleet are being wound down, are being systematically replaced. There's big policy and delivery question marks over the nuclear ambition. They have exhausted almost totally the onshore opportunity and their offshore endeavours are taking them out into the middle of the North Sea. Why should we, why shouldn't we, as their nearest neighbour, with one of the best wind regimes in Northern Europe, with the land mass and with the competencies, the technical and other human capital competencies that have built our, our own indigenous industry to date, why should we not deploy that in an export-oriented context? Quilta is, is a natural resources company and the breadth of what Quilta does is not, I think, tr truly understood. We are also at the heart of Ireland's renewable energy ambition. Today, 1600 megawatts there, thereabouts, is, is on a good windy day, is, is, is providing power to the single electricity market. 20% of that is derived from sites originally supplied by Quilta. We are the biggest supplier of strategic sites to the wind farm developer community. We solve problems for every wind farm developer in Ireland by giving them access across our lands to build, to build projects, to connect to the grid, rights of ways, way leaves, etc. We have a 400 megawatt development portfolio in our own right and we're very proud of our achievements where we've achieved planning consents in six different counties in Ireland within the last two years despite some of the challenges place, placed in the, in, in the whole planning environment and we expect by the end of next year to have our whole portfolio fully planning consented and we look forward to the development phase of those, pro those projects. We are at the core of the very difficult challenge in respect of Ireland's renewable heat targets that I would have mentioned earlier. We have a biomass business that is offering solutions to the industrial market to remove their dependency on oil and gas and to use renewable wood sources in order to power their production plants. Natural resources, innovation, sustainability are at the heart of what Quilta does. Thank you.